Hey guys, welcome back to the second video on naming alkanes. So, if you guys watched the previous one, we this is where we ended. All right, and I promised that we were going to get into more uh more complicated examples, such as what happens when you have more than one substituent, all right? And so we're just going to get right into that. Okay? And so if at any point in this video you want to pause the pause it and try it on your own before I go through it, feel free to do that um because I'm recording this right after your lecture on the alkane nomenclature so you guys have had exposure to it so again if you want to try feel free to pause it and uh, you can check yourself with my explanation okay and so let's start off with this one so first step when you're naming an alkane is to find the longest chain alright so let's just start numbering and see where we go so we have here carbon 1 2 3 4 5 six, seven, eight, all right, that's eight carbons, but let's try maybe other combinations, let's try if I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, look at that, nine carbons, all right, now, uh, it may have looked to you that, essentially, here, I'm just going to erase this purple so it's not as cluttered, so now, it may have looked to you that what I circled here was the main chain, just because of the way this, um, just because of the way that it was drawn, okay? But this is commonly what they'll do on the test, is they'll make uh, the longest chain kind of curve off, and you'll think that that's going to be a substituent, but it's actually still the longest chain. So it may have looked like this would have been a substituent, yet uh, they did that on purpose in order to try to... Um, confuse you guys all right so this could commonly happen on a test and so you just got to be really careful all right a naming question is not a question that you want to get wrong it's um, usually one of the easiest questions on exam one all right so we found our longest chain is nine carbons all right and so first step is to write down the root and so if you remember from the list before I showed you guys in the previous video or online or in lecture you remember that it's nonane all right, and again, ain means alkane. The root word always has the ain ending when you're dealing with alkanes. So now we have to look at our substituents. All right, and so this is just we just got to count them up, see what we have. So I'm going to color all the main carbon chains green, and we'll do all the substituents in a different color. Okay, and so here we have three atoms that are uncolored, and so well, three carbons, so we have those two, and we have this third one over here. So if you guys remember, these are all CH3 groups, and so what that means is that's a methyl group, okay? So we have three methyl groups, um, and now what we do is, instead of labeling it essentially like 2-methyl, 4-methyl, 7-methyl nonane, we can group them together, right? they're the same exact uh, substituent, just in different places. And so the way we do this is we simply just write in ascending, in ascending order in terms of the number. So we would write 2, I'll do that in red actually, 2, comma, 4, comma, 7, trimethyl nonane. Okay? Alright, so a couple things to note. We group them together like this. So you just look at the carbon position. 2, 4, and then 7. Separate them by commas. Then do a dash. And then we have to do the substituent. But we have to, again, show the amount of those substituents. So we would write 2, 4, 7, which is 3 methyls. So we have to write trimethyl nonane. Okay? And so, just before we finish this, let's just make sure that we've minimized the, the substituent numbers as much as possible. All right? So, I labeled this chain starting from here as carbon 1. So, let's try to do it in the reverse. So, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And let's count, let's write out the methyl carbon positions this time around. So we're going to have it at carbon 3, right? 
right over here. Then we have another one at carbon 6, and then another one at carbon 8. So in this case, it would have been 368-trimethylnonane. All right, so 368 versus 247, we can see that the 247 is the lower one. And so that's going to be our answer right here. This is the answer. Okay, hope that one was a clear example. So now we're going to go on to a little bit of a more complicated problem. All right. Oh, crap. Okay, so here this one looks a little bit more complicated, but again, the steps are exactly the same. You just want to find the longest carbon chain. So I'm just going to pick a spot and start counting. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so eight, that's an option. What about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Nine. Look at that. Another nine carbon chain. And again, another way that they've made it look as if this is the substituent, but it's not. It's actually the main chain. In reality, that was the substituent. All right. So don't be fooled because the longest chain is kind of curved down. All right. The reason that's possible is because uh, single bonds are able to rotate. All right. So I could write a carbon chain looking like this. And I could also write the carbon chain looking like this. That's still, we have one, two, three, four, five carbons here, and have one, two, three, four, five carbons there, all right? This is a very key feature of single bonds and that they're able to rotate. And it's going to be a, a really huge part in Orgo 1, all right? You'll see later on that they love to mess with single bond rotations, um, and people often forget that they can. Whereas other things such as double bonds and triple bonds cannot rotate. All right, so just keep that in the back of your head. And so our purple numbering was the correct one. And so we're going to go with the purple numbering. Okay. So we have nine carbons. So we're going to write down the root name. And so nine, nine is nonane. Again, I know I'm repeating myself, but we have that ane ending. It's important. And so now we have to look at the substituents. So again, I'm just going to color in the main chain purple so it's easier for you guys to see and you could do this on the test you know you, if you guys have multicolored pen sets you can feel free to use them and so we have two substituents now we have this group over here and we have this all right and these are part of one okay so let's list our substituents so we have a CH3 group at carbon 2, so let's write 2 methyl. And we don't have another methyl here, so we can't group them, right? Because we have this group over here. That's a 2 carbon group coming off of that carbon 6, all right? A 2 carbon group uh, has the name ethyl. And so we would write now 6 ethyl, all right? So these are our two substituents. We have a 2-methyl and a 6-ethyl. So how do we do this now? Okay. What goes first? What goes last? Well, the root is always the last part. That shouldn't be a problem. And the way we arrange the, um, the different substituent types is in alphabetical order. All right. So the one closest to A is going to be first in the name. And the further we, down we go into the alphabet, the uh, further back it'll be in the naming. So between an E and an M, ethyl is first. And so we would put the methyl in the back, closer to the end, 2-methyl. Then we would put this ethyl over here. And we just separate them by a dash. So the answer is 6-ethyl, 2-methylnonane. OK? So that's how you name that. And also just be careful. If let's say we have multiple substituents of the same type, so let's say I had uh, another methyl coming out, um, at, let's say the three carbon, okay? Uh, and so we would now have to name it as six ethyl um, two three 
dimethyl nonane. This di part, even though the D is first in the alphabet, does not mean that the methyl now comes before it. We only allow the alphabetical order rule only applies to the, the actual root of the substituent, so methyl. Just because it has the D in front of it does not mean that we're going to now change the positioning within the name. So whether you have di, tri, uh, tetra, penta, doesn't matter. What you have to look at is a substituent. So I could have uh, dimethyl, but because I had an ethyl, it would still go first because E comes before M. All right, so that's just something you got just for you guys to know. And also, it's a good practice to make sure we numbered the chain correctly to minimize the substituent number. So let's just quickly count in the reverse. So we start with here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And so if you look, we had a six ethyl, uh, we have a 4 ethyl now. And we would also have a 7 methyl and a 2 and a Oh, sorry, 8-methyl. And so, we're, and I'm going to discount this one, actually, because that was just to show you guys from before. And so, here we had 6-ethyl, 2-methyl. In the other case, we would have had 4-methyl, I'm sorry, 4-ethyl and 8-methyl, okay? 4-methyl uh, and 8-methyl are just going to be bigger substituents in general, and so we don't want that, right? 4, verse eight, four and 8 versus 6 and 2, Okay? And so this is the correct answer over here. Now let's go on to an example that you guys have seen before. This is in your pre-class quiz, okay? And a lot of people uh, were telling me they were having trouble with it, and it is a bigger molecule, and it is very similar to something you could probably see on a test. And so let's talk about this one. Again, steps are always the same. You're going to find the longest carbon chain, so just pick a place and start numbering. So I'm going to pick right here, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Okay, and now you can't really pick anywhere else to start uh, numbering, just because you would have always you always get that answer. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whichever way you pick, it doesn't really um, doesn't really work out to anything different. So seven is our answer. So I'll just go in purple because that was just what I wrote originally. Okay. So we have 7, and so we have to find the root now. The root for 7 is heptane. So let's just write out heptane. Okay. So now substituent time. First, actually, let me just color in again the main chain. And it is a, I, um, it may seem kind of un, um, unnecessary that I'm coloring it in, but it can help just for you to keep track of what what's what because, you know, you number it sometimes. But... If you're depending on how neat you are, you might kind of number close to here, and you might consider this as the three carbon. You get confused, and so um, just circling in or coloring in those carbons can just help you keep track of everything. It's up to you guys. It's whatever helps you on a test. And so now we look at our substituents. Okay, so we have a methyl there, another methyl there, a third methyl there, and we have this ethyl group, right? Colored in differently. And now we have a bunch of substituents. And so how would you name this? Well, let's just list them out first and we can always re and we'll reorder them however we need it. And so we have let's start with the ethyl. It's going to be at the 3 carbon, so it's going to be 3 ethyl. Okay? And now let's look at the methyls. So here we have two methyls on the same carbon, right? Carbon four, and one on the six carbon. So when you have them on the same exact carbon, all we do is just repeat the number twice. So before when we went at this example, over here we had two, four, seven trimethyl. They were on three different atoms. All we do here is write four, four for our methyls. So let's go through it. Let's do it in red. So we're gonna have four comma four because we had two methyls on the same carbon comma six trimethyl okay so that's what we have here and so now how do we order this around so ethyl comes before the m and methyl so we would put 
the ethyl first. And so let's put it like here. I'm just going to move this over so we have more room. Okay. And so that's what we have here. But again, we need to check to make sure that our substituents are the lowest number possible. So I'm going to renumber this in the reverse order. Okay. So let's start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So stays the same in terms of the root. Right. If you find, found the longest chain, then it shouldn't be any different. So now let's look at our substituent. Let's list them out. What we're going to have here, um, our methyls are on the carbon 4 now. Two of them are on the 4, and we have one on carbon 2. So we're going to list this as 2, 4, uh, 4, trimethyl. And now the ethyl is on carbon 5, all right? And so we have a 5 ethyl okay and so now which one is going to be the one that uh, that wins out well a quick way of doing this is to be is just adding the substituent numbers together so we can add 2 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 and compare that to 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 6 if it's not too obvious already okay so 4 so here so 2 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 right 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 5 is 15. And then over here, we're going to have 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 6, right? 6 plus 4 is 10, plus another 4 is 14, plus 3 is going to be 17. All right, so we have a 15 total number compared to the 17. So we're going to want to go with the one that's lower, and so that's the 15. So this one right here is not going to be our answer. It's going to be what we wrote in green over here. And so now we have to just put them in the correct order in terms of alphabetical order. All right, so we put this first. And I'm just going to move this out of the way. And then we put the 5 ethyl. Put that dash there. So our answer is 5-ethyl-244-trimethylheptane, okay? And that's going to be one of the more complicated examples you'll see, and that's probably going to be very similar to what you're going to come up on the test. And so in the next video, I'm just going to be talking about um, a couple ways, a couple like essentially weird names, I guess, of different patterns of carbons you can see. So we, um, so this is the systematic way that you guys have been seeing of naming, but there are alternate ways. And there's a couple naming designations that are important for you guys to know. The chance that it will come up on the test, uh, probably not too high, but I have seen it on one of your, uh, I think either pre-class quizzes it was on, they use this naming system. And so it could come up on your test this year. So I would watch it anyway, just so you could be 100% safe. So if you guys have any questions about what you saw in this video, feel free to contact me, a TA, and we'd be happy to help you out.